All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another one of my longer, quote-unquote, uh, deep dive videos, as one of my viewers, Dylan, calls them. I got a complaint after the last one that everything was a bit too small, so I zoomed it in a little bit more this time, and I'll see how this works for everybody. So, this time around, we are delving into, as you can probably see, the various... OPEC member nations, at least the major ones, primarily the Persian Gulf nations, the OPEC nations, primarily the Persian Gulf nations, together, although the numbers can vary from time to time, typically make up between a quarter to a third of the world's uh, total oil supply. Now, most of these nations have, for a prolonged period of time, maintained production plateaus. Normally around the halfway empty point is typically when you can't push it any further or any higher up because the amount in there has now dropped beyond a uh, sort of point of no return where even though if you keep punching more and more holes in the ground, drilling more and more wells for it, it just doesn't matter anymore because there's so much less oil now that the pressure within the reservoir is just, you know, so much lower now that it's only going to decrease from there on in. And obviously, after you've crossed that halfway point, or roughly halfway point, continuously get lower and lower production numbers on until the point of depletion. So, now we're going to look at the production plateau of the various OPEC member nations and Persian Gulf nations. And we're going to have a look at when based on their reserves, or in some cases, their claimed reserves, when they will likely fail to be able to hold their current plateau levels any longer. So, starting with Go Big or Go Home, we have Saudi Arabia, famously nowadays holding a plateau of about 10 million barrels per day. However, in previous times, namely between 1988 and 2008, they actually held a little bit lower. Their average plateau-ish was around 8 million barrels per day. And so as you can see over here, it's pretty simple math. 8 million barrels a day times 100 days. 800 million barrels for every 100 days. 365 days in a year. So you can then just multiply the 800 million times 3.65, which is of course 2.9 billion. So about 2.9 billion barrels a year being produced. So to then find out how much their reserves decreased over that time, you just multiply the 2.9 by 20, which would give you 58 billion. So minus 58 billion from their numerous different reserve numbers. They have their numbers from before the end of the 80s. It claimed to be having about 166 billion barrels of oil and repeatedly claimed that every single year the number never went up or down. It never changed. Then, at the end of the 80s, a lot of the OPEC member nations abruptly shot their reserve numbers up. Saudi Arabia suddenly went from claiming they had 166 billion to claiming they had 266 billion. And since then, for the last 30 years, it hasn't gone down like it really should have. It hasn't gone up either. They just repeatedly claim that they still have exactly that much. Or so Saudi Arabia would love for you to believe. But I prefer believing that uh, the people viewing this, the people like seeking out this kind of information, are at least assumably not stupid. So you probably uh, aren't buying that. And then on some of them, I add a third reserves row. It's between the second and first numbers based on an average of, I believe it was 40 to 45% additional discovered uh, reserves over that particular length of time, discovered by nations that don't lie about their numbers. And we're going to go down each uh, different possible starting reserve amount and see roughly when we would reach the halfway point. So as I said, uh, the first round of uh, 20 years here, where they averaged 8 million barrels per day, between 1988 and 2008, that would give you 58 billion barrels extracted from the ground. So from a starting reserve amount, 166 billion barrels, that would have, by 2008, have put them down to 108 billion. If they're inflated number, and starting with that number, that would obviously put them down to 
208 billion by 2008. If the plus 40 to 45 percent discovered over time number was true, which would be about 236 billion, that would then by 2008 put them down to 178. Then between 2008 and 2018, Saudi Arabia on average ramped up and has been producing about 10 million barrels per day. The math for 10 million barrels per day obviously being uh, pretty easy, it just comes out to uh, 3.65 billion, which for benefit of the doubt sake on their part, I'll round down to 3.6. So between 2008 and last year, 2018, that would be another 36 billion from each number extracted from the ground. So that would put the top round down to 72 billion, the middle round down to 172 billion, and the third possible down to 142 billion. Now I put this uh, this yellow block off mark here for the top reserve amount because as you can see, 72 billion is uh, below 83 billion, which would be the halfway depletion point for the top potential starting reserve number. So given that uh, they've already passed that point, it's become pretty clear and likely that their first original stated number from the 80s wasn't actually real. So likely either their inflated number was originally true when they first stated it, or something in between that and their original. So going onward and assuming uh, for the next several years that they hold at 10 million barrels per day of production, then off of the bottom row, you would get down to 118 billion barrels left or just below it by 2026, which would be about the halfway point for that particular starting number or from their second claimed number, if they continue holding at 10 million barrels per day, they would reach the halfway point or get below the halfway point of that starting reserve number around 2029 or 2030. Both possible time frames uh, co-align with a leak from inside uh, Saudi Aramco that where some higher officials from within Saudi Aramco leaked out uh, information slash kind of a warning that Saudi Arabia wouldn't be able to hold a 10 million barrel per day plateau past 2028 or 2029. Said people have since mysteriously disappeared, as is typical of what happens when you leak secrets and you live in a dictatorship. But regardless, that did align uh, between where the numbers actually came out here. So Saudi Arabia's plateau is likely going to uh, begin to fail between 2025 and 2030. I suspect probably closer to the 2029, 2030. And that in particular is uh, a reason apart from boosting the oil prices and their national revenue. That is uh, a reason why Saudi Arabia in particular loves doing these uh, production cuts because it lets them cut back a little bit, not too much uh, to the point where it could potentially damage their national revenue, but enough to where they can keep ever so slightly and covertly pushing this potential date out a little further. And I'm basically calling it now, they are going to try to hide this as best as they possibly can by making, you know, statements about how the world is supplied enough as is, and uh, they're, they're going to ease back on the taps, you know, willingly, and it has nothing to do with any actual internal issues. And they'll slowly, you know, stair-step down, you know, down to, down to you know, nine and a half million barrels per day, maybe, maybe down to nine million barrels per day, and then they'll carry on that for a few years, then they'll drop it down to maybe eight and a half, maybe eight, and they'll probably just try to keep going like that, uh on and on for as long as the ruse will hold up. All right, so now that we've had the uh, the whole like round out and introduction thing, each of these should go pretty quickly. So moving on from Saudi Arabia to the United Arab Emirates. The United Arab Emirates also had an original claimed number and then a sudden late 80s inflated number. So of course I added a middle number. Their original claim number was 32 billion barrels. Their sudden overnight inflation number was 97 billion barrels, and the middle plus 40 to 45% came out at about 49 billion barrels. 
So between 1988 and 2008, the UAE averaged about 2.2 million barrels per day of production. And doing the math over here, that works out to pumping out about 0.8 billion barrels per year. So over the course of 20 years, obviously, 10 times 0.8 gives you 8. 20 times it, you know, gives you 16. So that's 16 billion barrels sucked out of the ground over that period of time, which would drop 32 billion down to 16 billion, which obviously would have been their halfway point already, which is why off here for the future, I yellow blocked it. So again, it has to be either their sudden inflated number or the middle number. Their higher claimed number would have dropped down to 81 billion. Although again, they never admitted as such and never would. They still claim to this day that they have 97 billion and their number has never changed and never will. But that would have dropped it down to 81 billion and would have dropped the middle number down to 33 billion. So then between 2008 and 2018, the UAE averaged 2.8 million barrels per day, which comes out to, you can see over here, about rounded 1 billion barrels per year. So that's 10 billion barrels off the numbers, which would put the second number down to 71 billion barrels, would put the third middle ground-ish number down to 23 billion barrels, which would technically be below the halfway point for the third number. So we're basically left with the second claimed number. Now, since 2018, the UAE has been averaging 3 million barrels per day and has indicated the intent to at least continue doing so and the aim to very quickly bring themselves up to 4 million barrels per day. So I did two different split paths for that. So at 3 million barrels per day, that drains you of about 1.1 billion barrels of reserves each year, which obviously, since we're jumping to 2028, over the course of 10 years, that would drain you of 11 billion barrels, which, since we're down to their second claimed number, that would put that down to 60 billion barrels remaining. Or, if they actually bump themselves up as quickly as they want to to 4 million barrels per day and for the next 10 years produce about 4 million barrels per day on average, that would drain them of about 1.4 billion barrels each year, which would then have them down to 57 billion barrels. So, assuming they then, in each of those scenarios, continue to then hold that number for another 10 years after that, up to 2038, that would bring them down at the 3 million barrel per day average, down to 49 billion barrels, which is just at the threshold of the halfway point. So you would jump one more year there to 2039 in that scenario, and that would be about the end. Or in the 4 million barrel per day scenario, that would then drop them from 57 down to 43 billion barrels by 2038, which is a few billion below the halfway point. So you'd have to backtrack a couple years back to around 2034 or 2035. So the UAE most likely losing their ability to hold a plateau, whether 3 million barrels per day or 4 million barrels per day, likely losing that plateau ability in the mid to late 2030s. Now moving on down to one of the potentially longest lasting Gulf nations, Kuwait. Kuwait's original claimed number was 67 billion barrels, then 97 billion barrels, and their potential middle ground number is actually pretty close, adding a potential 40 to 45% of 67 would jump up to about 94. So working with those between 1988 and 2008, on average Kuwait pumped about 2 million barrels per day over that 20 year period. 2 million barrels per day, as you can see over here, comes out at about 0.7 billion barrels per year. So 20 times that gives you 14 billion. So minus 14 billion from each of these. First round would drop us down to 53 billion. Second would drop down to 83 billion. Third would drop down to 80 billion. None of which are at their halfway points yet, so we would keep going. Between 2008 and 2018, Kuwait averaged 2.5 million barrels per day of production which comes out to about 0.9 billion barrels per year. That's 9 billion barrels out over the course of 10 years. So first round drops down to 44 billion, second drops down to 74, third would drop down to 71. Still none at any halfway points yet until we get to 2028, or 2029 rather.
but since 2018, Kuwait has been averaging about 2.7 million barrels per day of production, which, similar to 2.8 million barrels per day of production, rounds out to around a billion barrels per year coming out of the ground. So that's 10 billion off each number, so first potential drops down to 34 billion, which is right above the halfway point, and so in that potential, their plateau capability would end around 2029. Second one drops down to 64 billion, third one drops down to 61 billion, neither of which are halfway points yet, so you keep going up to 2038. And assuming Kuwait holds the same amount, then they drop by another 10, so second one by 2038 drops the total reserves down to 54 billion, third one drops it down to 51 billion, then if you draw it out another 10 years to 2048, that would have the second one down to 44 billion, and the third one down to 41 billion, both of which are below their respective halfway points. And so then you have to backtrack some years. Coming out to using the second potential starting reserve amount, the one that they claimed, ending their plateau capability around 2044, and the somewhat lesser third amount ending their plateau capability around 2042, and each of these being more likely than the first, since we've already started to see a pattern of that, that puts Kuwait's plateau holding ability likely lasting out until the early 2040s. So, Kuwait has a long way to go. And Iraq has an even longer way to go, since Iraq actually has a different situation than the others. Iraq isn't uh, riddled with number of claims. Iraq's numbers actually, like, changed legitimately over the course of time in various directions. And Iraq actually had large uh, regions of the nation, particularly further in the north in, you know, the Kurdish areas, that were unexplored. A lot of which wasn't even explored until after both conflicts. So... Starting with uh, 1988 up to 2008, a rough average plotted out uh, puts them at about 1.2 million barrels per day over that time, which comes out to only about 0.4 billion barrels being extracted per year. So over the course of 20 years, that's only about 8 billion barrels. Now, way originally, originally back in the day, Iraq was suspected to have started out with only about 65 billion barrels, and so that's eventually changed to 100 billion and even 139 billion barrels. So working with each one of those and taking out 8 billion barrels, you end up with, by 2008, in the first scenario, being down to 57 billion, second scenario being down to 92, third scenario being down to 131, none of which are anywhere near the respective halfway points, obviously. So... Between 2008 and 2018, Iraq was up. Iraq averaged 3 million barrels per day, around 1.1 billion barrels per year. So, so taking out 11 billion barrels from each one drops the first drops the first potential down to 46, second one down to 81, and third down to 120. And most recently, Iraq has been holding themselves for the last year or so around four and a half million barrels per day pretty consistently. So, pumping at 4.5 million barrels per day, that would draw you out at about 1.6 billion barrels per year. So between 2018 and 2028, that would put the first scenario below the halfway points around the year 2027. That would put the second scenario down to 65 billion barrels and the third scenario down to 104. Now, assuming they maintained that plateau continually and did not pump higher, which they most likely will. So uh, this is most likely going to uh, come a bit sooner, but just running with the 4.5 numbers, extending that out again to 2038. And you have the second scenario coming, coming to a plateau's end around 2037. And the third scenario, dropping down to 88 billion, still not the halfway point for that, extending it out again to 2048, and that drops down to 72 billion, which is still not the halfway point of 139 billion. The third scenario of 139 billion barrels for Iraq 
would have their potential plateau, if they held a plateau of 4.5 million barrels per day, that is. But under that scenario, it would have their plateau capability lasting all the way past 2050, which is why I've said in uh, past videos and particularly in the past version of this video of the Gulf nations um, in terms of oil production, it, it ain't Saudi Arabia, it's going to be Iraq that's going to be the last one standing. Now, Iran, Iran has also had a kind of a shaky, wobbly production history. It's been a bit all over the place. Iran actually also did have a lot of undeveloped and unexplored area in their actual offshore Persian Gulf waters. So an actual fair amount was legitimately added to their reserves. So Iran, we actually had to play around with four different numbers. So the first claimed number from Iran being 59 billion. Then with the overnight inflation numbers in the late 80s, they jumped to 92. The plus 40 to 45% discovery number being about 83. And the potentially super high number being 132. So between 1988 and 2008, even though they were up and down and a bit all over the place, Iran did average out to about 3 million barrels per day. 3 million barrels per day is about 1.1 billion barrels per year. So from 1988 to 2008, that's about a negative hit of 22 billion barrels. So that would bring the first number down to 37, second one down to 70, third one down to 61, and fourth highest one down to 110. Between 2008 and 2018, they were a little bit higher. They averaged 3.5 million barrels per day, which comes out to about 1.3 billion barrels per year. So 10 years, that takes you off by 13 billion. Drops the first number down to 24 billion, second number down to 57, third number down to 48, and the highest number dropping down to 97. So that would put the first one down below the halfway point already. So we yellow blocked that off and ended that line. And over the last year and a half or so, Iran's output has collapsed, not because of supply issues, but because of the sanctions. They're only pumping about 2.5 million barrels per day now, and they actually consume domestically around 1.9 million barrels per day. So they're actually dropping down closer and closer to their own domestic consumption mark. But 2.5 million barrels per day comes out to about 0.9 billion barrels per year. So if we assumed they held that for the next 10 years or so, figure that would probably give enough time for everything to politically go out, you know, every and everything would resettle. So by 2028, that would put the second number down to 48, third number down to 39, and the fourth and highest number down to 88. And that would technically actually mean the third number would hit its halfway point around 2026. And the second number would hit its halfway point one year after the 2028 mark out at 2029. And then assuming that uh, everything is settled out by 2028, I ran two possible uh, scenarios out from that. Either Iran brings themselves uh, all the way back up to where they were almost at, about 4 million barrels per day, or they only bring themselves back up to 3 million barrels per day. So under the 4 million barrel per day scenario, they, by 2038, would be down to 73 billion barrels. In the only remaining scenario where they haven't crossed the halfway point, and under the 3 million barrel per day potential, they would only be down to 77. And for each of these, the end of plateau capability under the 4 million barrel per day scenario would come around 2043, and under the 3 million barrel per day scenario would come around 2048. So that gives you a slightly broader range, like a decent 10 year range of Iran's capability likely faltering in the 2040s. So for Nigeria over in West Africa, we did things a little bit differently. I just had one running with their assumed starting 37 billion barrels. The 40 to 45% uh, potential discoveries adjusted amount of 52. And since in 2010, they uh, started just not changing their 37 billion barrels reserve number. 
I decided to have the would-be inflated second scenario uh, that the other OPEC member nations had just be a scenario or a case where, starting in 2020, they actually somehow still have 37 billion barrels and start at 37 from there. So from 2010 up until now, and since there's, you know, just the remaining months of this year left to go until 2020, basically from 2010 until 2020, Nigeria has averaged 1.6 million barrels per day, which comes out to about 0.6 billion barrels per year. So between 2010 and 2020, off of the first number, down to 31 billion barrels, off of the higher number, down to 46 billion barrels. And then in next year, 2020, starting the second line of assuming that uh, of assuming that they actually do still have 37 billion barrels, which they're claiming, running off the assumption that they finally, as they almost have, finish all their repairs, that they do bring themselves back up to a plateau of about 2 million barrels per day, as they once had in the past. Assuming they get back up to 2 million barrels per day, which is, of course, about 0.7 billion barrels per year. Then between 2020 and 2030, they would drop from the first number down to 24 billion barrels, the newly inserted second number down to 30 billion, and the highest potential number down to 39 billion. And assuming then that they still kept that plateau of 2 million barrels per day, they would reach their halfway point and thus end of plateau capacity off of the first number scenario around 2039. However, off of the other two, by 2040 they would be down to 23 billion barrels left, and off of the highest potential number, they would be down to 32 billion barrels left. And assuming again, still, that they held a plateau of 2 million barrels per day, Nigeria's plateau capability would come to an end in either 2047 or 2049. So since none of those potential scenarios are past due yet, as in many of the past cases, since it was late 2030s versus late 2040s, so we say... Nigeria likely coming to a plateau slash major production end in the early to mid 2040s. And Libya, one of the ones that's actually always likely had real numbers, and one of the ones that's always had some problems, and especially over the course of this decade has really had some problems, Libya only has one round to work with. Starting at 2015, Libya had an estimated 48 billion. And between then and up until now, and and again, since this year is already almost halfway over, basically just until 2020, Libya only averaged about 0.6 million barrels per day, which comes out to only about 0.2 billion barrels per year. Over the course of five years, that would only tick you off by 1 billion. So by 2020, they will have only dropped down to 47 billion, and they have just very recently in these last several months, gotten back up to around 1 million barrels per day. So assuming post-2020, for the few years after that, they hold that average, then 1 million barrels per day, uh, as we remember, drops you by 0.3 billion barrels per year. So you go out by about three years before you've dropped by another billion barrels or so, so out to 2023, by which Libya intends to be back up to 2 million barrels per day, a plateau that they once held a long time ago. So running under the scenario that uh, that actually happens, then 2 million barrels per day, we remember is about 0.7 billion barrels per year. So starting in 2023, Libya is up to pumping 2 million barrels per day as their plateau. So jump 10 years out to 2033, then they'll have dropped by 7 billion barrels, down to 39 billion, assuming they continue holding 2 million flat, then jump out to 2043, and they drop down to 32 billion. And then again, if they still kept holding that, they would go beyond the halfway point in the early 2050s, uh, particularly right at about 2054. Assuming that Libya goes up to 2 and then stays there and doesn't decide to like go full throttle and try to start pumping 3 or 4 million barrels a day, then Libya's potential 2 million barrel per day plateau could last up until the early 2050s. 
So Libya has the potential to last up until uh, around the same time as Iraq, just uh, at lower numbers. Now, working with another non-OPEC nation, Russia. Russia, as of 2017, was at about 80 billion barrels, with most organizations' estimates having having a high confidence that they likely have around 50 or 60 billion barrels of remaining undiscovered oil. So I gave them the higher of those two for their second number. So the first number, assuming it's just the current 80 billion. Second number, assuming it's the total 140 billion to start with now. Russia between 2017 and this current year 2019 was averaging about 10 million barrels per day which is, of course, about 3.6 billion barrels per year. That would put the first number by this year down to 72.8 billion barrels, and the potential total higher number down to 132.8 billion barrels. For the future outlook, as of the moment, Russia has now pushed themselves up to averaging 11 million barrels per day, which comes out to about 4 billion barrels per year. So holding this uh, current state of production... Between now and 2022, Russia will thus, at 11 million barrels per day, pump out about another 12 billion barrels over the next three years. That would put the first potential number already down to 60.8 billion barrels, the second potential higher number down to 120.8. So by 2025, we're down to 48.8 and 108.8. And then if you continue onward, if they're still at 11 million barrels per day and not trying to push higher, which uh, they've been indicating that they want to do, they're going for 12, so they're, uh, they're probably actually going to drain that faster. Then off of the first assumed number scenario, they would reach the end of their heights around 2027, so not even 10 years from now, and under the likely higher number, they would only be down to 96.8 billion by that point, and they would, under that second number scenario, reach uh, the end of their capability, at least of holding an 11 million barrel per day plateau around 2034 or 2035. So Russia can only likely hold as is until between 2025 and 2035. Now, Qatar had a potentially long future ahead, but they decided to change things recently after leaving OPEC. So, Qatar didn't suddenly inflate their reserve numbers in the 80s. They did that in 2002. Before 2002, they supposedly had 15 billion barrels, and then starting in 2002, they had 25 billion barrels. So, running off of each different scenario... Between 2002 and 2007, Qatar averaged about 0.6 million barrels per day, which, again, averages about 0.2 billion barrels per year. So, jumping those five years, you lose a billion barrels, so down to either 14 or 24. Then, between 2007 and 2010, Qatar averaged about 0.8 million barrels per day, which is about 0.3 billion barrels per year. So the three years of that would take off about a billion barrels, so down to 13 and down to 23. Between 2010 and 2014, they produced 0.7 million barrels per day, which would be close to 0.25 billion barrels per year. So those four years across would take off another billion, so down to 12 and down to 22. And then since 2014 up until now, Qatar has averaged about 0.6 million barrels per day again. So five years loses you another billion, so down to either 11 or 21. However, now, after leaving OPEC, Qatar has apparently uh, just cranked it all the way up to maximum. Or what I'll assume is maximum. And for the last couple months has been pumping 1.4 million barrels per day. 1.4 million barrels per day gives you about 0.5 billion barrels per year. So every two years, that's a billion barrels out, assuming they decide to hold this number as their plateau. So by 2021, they'll be down to either 10 or 20. Then by 2023, they'll be down to either 9 or 19. By 2025, they'll be down to either 8 or 18 billion. 
By 2027, they'll be down to either 7 billion or 17 billion, which for the first number will be below the halfway point. So 2027 would be the end of their plateau capability. The second reserve number scenario would come to a plateau end around 2036. So for Qatar, I just chopped the six down to 2035 and gave a general range of 2025 to 2035 for the likely end of their plateau capability. Uh, but it did not have to be this way. Uh, it was, they were expected to go all the way into the second half of the century if uh, they'd, they'd stayed at uh, the lower numbers. But the instant they left OPEC, they just went full epinephrine shot on it. That's all that for that. I hope you guys pretend to enjoy this, but if you've confused yourself into thinking you did, please leave a like on the video. It really helps with the metrics and stuff and gets it more visible. Subscribe if you haven't already. If anyone does help support me financially directly, then links to my paypal.me and my Patreon and my Redbubble shop with my stupid stuff for sale is all in the description down below. I will see everybody around next time.